Good morning. Today is Tuesday. <laughs> Did have to think there. <laughs> you know, I think back in the day, okay, we're going down a rabbit hole. Back in the day, everybody read the morning paper, or most people did. They sat down to a regular breakfast and they had the morning paper, and you knew what day it was. But with social media and just one day blurring into the next many times, Truth be told, I really have to stop and think, what day is this? So today is Tuesday and I am out and about. I'm definitely gonna run errands, I know that. I'm gonna head to the bank and next to the bank is a Goodwill pop-up. This is the one in Mount Joy that opened because the Elizabethtown one is under renovation. I have to check on that to see if Elizabethtown, you know, where we're at with that. So I'm excited for that new renovation store. But today we're gonna head over to the bank, which I won't film, and we're gonna go into Goodwill, which I will film. This is a very small Goodwill. Now I have found some good things there, but the competition, there's quite a few resellers there and there's only like maybe five aisles and they're very small. But you know me, I am all about trying to find stuff to flip for a profit. I don't care if the Goodwill is two shelves or it's 20. Love going into Goodwill and seeing what I can find to flip for a profit on eBay. Speaking of eBay, it has been glitch fest over on eBay. Right now I have probably close to 300 items that need updating of item specifics for the fifth time. Come on eBay, get your act together. Recently, Auction Professor, I believe that's his name, he also has a YouTube channel, posted that Easter cards, that items uh, specifics, now have fake poop as, <laughs> does it get any weirder, as a type of card. Who makes this stuff up? Who are they hiring that would actually think that fake poop is a category for Easter cards? Unbelievable. But my items need to be updated once again, but my sales are picking up, so that's good. I am on it, I am listing, and what else is happening? So far, no baby bunnies to be seen in the front yard. Not quite sure if the mama has left the location because I'm in and out so much, or the babies just aren't born yet. I have not looked into what the gestation period or what, what goes on with that. Put it on the list of things to do. All right, we're gonna hit the road. Well, we're not gonna hit it, we're gonna get on it. And we're gonna go to the bank. I'm going to the bank, you're coming with me to Goodwill. And then there's a slight chance. So then I'm stopping home. All right, let's backtrack. Goodwill, then I'm stopping home to upload the footage so that a video can get into production mode. To produce one of these videos, all in all, it takes hours and hours between from the time of planning it, making notes, filming it, downloading it, uploading it, editing, putting it on YouTube and launching it. I'm gonna say it's gotta take at least 10 hours and a lot of that is my daughter Lisa editing for me. So if she ever quits on me, I am in deep trouble. <laughs> I will learn it, but um, okay. And then after that, after we come home and upload the footage, then I might stop at Roots Flea Market. The flea market is today. Now on Tuesdays, when I go to the flea market and I'm serious about it, I try to get there, you know, really early and it's already like nine o'clock, but you never know. We'll see what happens. I'm going with the flow. And then tomorrow, Wednesday, I am getting together with a friend who I am meeting for the first time. I know her from social media. I'm not sure if she wants a shout out. So if she does, you'll be hearing about what a fun time we had. We are going to a high tea. And I am all about little sandwiches and big cups of tea. So hit that like and subscribe button. Let's get going. Let's see if we can find anything to flip for a profit in a very tiny Goodwill. I am just about to pop out to Goodwill, but I wanted to show you guys these three rose bushes that I had planted. I think this was last year. Look at the blooms on these. This is a knockout rose, and I think this is called popcorn. And they are just so happy. So I always like to share with you guys little snippets of what's going on around here. And these are making me super happy. Love those. No beetles yet. No nothing. No diseases. Look how healthy. Do we love these? Yes, we do. And on top of it, I didn't know that they would have a scent and they do. 
So this is just a really great pick. And what I love about them is when the rose is not quite open, it's just plain yellow. And then when they open, it gradually goes whiter and whiter, just like popcorn. Okay, let's hit the road. Let's get serious. <laughs> it's one of those days where every little thing is just catching my attention. All right, guys, let's go to Goodwill. Okay, guys, we have our mask on and we are just about to go into Goodwill. This is the Goodwill. I'm turning the camera around next to Isaac's. This is what the shopping center looks like. Down there, there is a new Stoffer's grocery store. Really, really good. And this is what's around here. So let's go in and see what we can find to flip for a profit. Okay, I have grabbed a cart and right away the art bin is capturing my attention. Any pieces that have a large amount of glass, I really have been avoiding. Even on Facebook Marketplace, they're not selling as quick as I'd like. So at this point, I'm either buying prints and removing the frames and glass if I think the print alone is worth it, or I'm trying not to buy framed pieces with glass. If the glass is like plexiglass or plastic, I still go ahead and pick them up. I did love those blue painted frames. Those were very pretty. But right now, I just make pretty much a beeline for the hard goods. Now this store, like I said, is a temporary location, but I'm really hoping they make this a permanent location. Every time I come in this store, it's very well attended, so I imagine they're doing well. I did get here shortly after the store opened and I am the only customer, which is my ultimate dream. <laughs> Some people wanna win the lottery. I just wanna win going into thrift stores and being the only customer. It's just so much more of a relaxed situation. Here I'm finding this eagle statue and on the bottom it says that it needs gluing, that the base is loose. Can I just say how much I appreciate when the employees, you know, make little notes of what's wrong with an item rather than buying it and getting it home and finding out there is a flaw. So shout out to Goodwill employees who really do their job nicely. Those are just little modern candle holders. I would imagine that's probably Walmart or Target. I think I'm just gonna show anything with a bunny for the rest of my life. So <laughs> if you don't like bunnies, I apologize. I don't do a lot of Christmas plates, cups, china. I will sell a Pottery Barn. Okay, this I love. If I was very wealthy and threw big dinner parties, I would have fish printed plates. And this is a little sauce boat or a gravy boat. And I absolutely love this. And in the cart it goes, item number one. I do a brief scan to make sure there are no other fish plates I'm leaving behind. And the milk glass bowls catch my attention. One day I'm going to have to include in a video what I'm talking about, that there is milk glass that brings good money. And I want to educate myself that way because Pennsylvania has a ton of milk glass. So I know very few pieces bring a high dollar amount, but I do want to learn and become familiar with what they are. This next item caught my attention, this bin of hats. Now I'm showing this gross hat because I don't pick up hats where there is a lot of sweat on the banding, even if it's a good brand. I don't have time to be de-schmutzing hats. Here I found a grouping of different illustrations. This looks like maybe a local artist and I thought they were very good. Now they were priced individual and this store does not alter its prices too much. Like if you brought the whole group up and said, hey, I'd like the whole group, could you give me a price? They would make you pay the $2. But I do put them in my cart to consider it, but I wind up putting them back because there must have been about 15 of them and I didn't want to pay $30 for them. 
Every time I see Herbal Essence, good memories. I was a girl of the 70s and used Herbal Essence in my hair. I had like the Farrah Fawcett haircut <laughs> with the bell-bottom jeans. So I always look at any kind of Herbal Essence shampoos. These are just a cardboard print, but I always take a look. I don't buy a lot of Norman Rockwell anything. Pretty much not so much. And that could be a mistake on my part. But I can only learn a certain amount about, you know, all the different niches, genres. So I don't pick up a lot of Norman Rockwell. Definitely not the plates. And I could be leaving money on the table, but you have to choose your battles. I brought this little eagle statue or figurine forward because I wanted to show you that first one very poorly painted, the second one painted a little bit better, but I felt that these were just plastic resin figurines and it was a votive candle holder. Would it have sold? Maybe, but I don't think you'd get more than 10 or $12 for that. And I have a lot of low price points going on in my store right now for all of the items I'm receiving free. So if I receive something for free, I'm fine with a smaller price. So like I mentioned, this is the location in uh, Mount Joy. Small store, but I usually can get at least a half a cart here. This was a trinket box. It was nicely painted, but the name of it was Design. I've never heard of a company called Design. This vase caught my attention. Now I do need to run a comp on different items, especially ones from China, more modern. I kind of liked the jungle monkey, uh, different cat print. So I do put that in my cart and a couple of aisles down, I run a comp on it and the comps were not there. That vase would have sold for about $10, $12. Here's the typical amber glass. I'm kind of over that unless the glass is a beautiful color or you know it's beautiful carnival glass then I go ahead and run a comp. This plate is Gottinger and this bowl is just the normal um, I don't even know what to call it iridescent edged bowl I leave both behind. This is a candle holder. I thought it was very poorly done. A lot of that type of pottery I judge by how it's painted. Okay, can we all appreciate how big this thing is? <laughs> I knew I wouldn't be buying it, but I wanted to show it to you guys. That thing weighed like 50 pounds. I'm not even quite sure where that came from. I did not look at the bottom. There was no way I was shipping that. Here I find a little bag of perfumes and they are all pre-owned. So when you list perfumes like this in eBay, you have to put them in a collectibles category because pre-owned cologne and perfume, I believe is still not allowed. This is a beautiful pink glass bowl. I didn't really think it had that much merit. So I do leave that behind. I liked the big lips, <laughs> caught my attention, but not for resale. I was really hoping this wasn't anything. Could you tell how heavy that was? And true enough, it was not anything. It came from a discount store, I imagine Ross or something like that. It was a little bit older and it did have damage. There was chipping on the handle and chipping on the paint inside. I do make myself look at everything though, because this is all part of the education. And I'm not quite sure if somebody painted that. It looks like it was the original paint and just chipping off. Maybe they had a plant in there. Bells, I never buy bells. And that's all I've got to say about that. Okay, I might buy bells. One time I bought a Fenton bell. Little figurine, definitely not high quality. and a plastic mermaid. I leave her behind for somebody else. So I guess this is their brown aisle. 
Anything that can organize me, I do take a look at. This is a bamboo flatwood tray. And I really don't need another one, so I force myself to put it back. These birds were interesting, but see the way the peg is shoved into a hole for the beak? Nope. I'm definitely not about that. The birds I like to pick up, a lot of them aren't marked because they're hand done. So I judge it by the quality of the construction, the carving and the painting. This vase looked like either somebody painted over it. I couldn't figure that out. And here's another vase. Both of them, in my opinion, nothing of merit, nothing worth picking up. Chickens, we love chickens. This plate is beautiful. This is Johnson Brothers, which is very prolific. I think Johnson Brothers might even still be producing dishes. And I believe they started in the late 1800s, I'm going to say, maybe even early 1800s. I think this last aisle is called everything they didn't know where to put. <laughs> Looking at that snorkel swim goggle. I'm going down to Florida in mid-June, and I'm hoping to do some water activities. I don't know much about the toys that are adventure toys, I'm gonna to call them. You know, the big pirate ships, the playhouse, it's a tree house up there. And while I probably could flip them on Facebook Marketplace, I'm only picking up items that would generally bring, I'm going to say, at least 35 or higher because it's not worth my time of getting in the car, even going the 10 minutes down the street. It's not even 10 minutes. So when I pick up larger things, I want to make sure it's worth my time. And now I am scooting across the aisle to clothing. I have found a few pieces in this store, but not as much as I would like. But I do always give a good scan to see what's going on, see if I can just pick something out. Levi's flannel shirt. I have sold this before 15 to 17 on a good day if it's in really nice condition and the flannel is heavy. Here I'm finding a shirt. The brand is Spicy Tuna. I don't know that brand, which doesn't mean anything, but when I see something like this, definitely running a comp. I do very well with fishing shirts. So whether it's Salt Life or, you know, even the sporty kind, even Columbia, I will pick up if it's a good shirt. Okay, here I'm finding Nike sneakers, floral, great condition, genuine Nike in the cart they go. I will run a comp and use the number on the tag. I have to comp every Nike sneaker, every single one, because I don't know sneakers. So I just go inside on the little white tag, get the number, put it into an eBay search. It comes up 99.9% .9 of the time, and I can see what those sneakers are going to bring. Tie-dye. I always look at tie-dye. The shoes in this store are fairly good. Okay, this is a pair of Crocs. I think in my whole reselling career, I might have sold two pairs of Crocs. I don't know where the disconnect is. I know you can get some pairs that bring very good money, but I really don't pick them up. I was looking at these sandals, $7 I felt was a little high. If I would have found those for a dollar or two, I would have picked them up. Okay, when I just felt that boot, that's a variation of the tap test. <laughs> that's how I feel leather. Right away, I see quality. N-A-O-T. Not quite sure how we say that name. I'm going to have to put that into a Google pronunciation. Nayat. That's how I'm going to pronounce it. It's probably wrong. Those go right in the cart. I have sold that brand before. If Alfred Dunner ever becomes a thing... I will be wealthy. I find more Alfred Dunner. This is the Soul to Soul Tim McGraw and Faith Hill shirt. I didn't imagine this was worth anything. There must be a million of these out there, but I do put it in my cart to force myself to run a comp. Sometimes I get lazy about running comps. Okay, these Merrill sneakers, very good. To me, these were a children's 
$9.99 was high for a children's. Now, Merrill is a good name, but I'm going to check at the register if that's supposed to be $99. If those are children's shoes, in my opinion, even for a good brand, they shouldn't be higher than $6 or $7. So I discipline myself. I will not take them at the $10. But if they quote me, you know, and say, oh, no, that's a mistake. Those are children's. Then I will take them. Otherwise, they go back on the shelf. And here I begin to look at books and artwork. The color of this caught my attention right away. I wasn't sure what they were from afar, but it is Disney. Pretty sure Frozen, right guys? This is Frozen. Don't know my Disney stories. It was framed in Michaels, which that kind of framing is better framing. It's a little bit more expensive. So somebody really cared about these and I start to realize I'm probably going to pick these up if it's a low enough buy-in price. Sure enough, $2.99. What I love about something like this is that if you have a buyer that is buying one, good chances if they are decorating with this style, they will search your store for what other ones you have or in each listing you can write something a little vague about please check my store for additional listings something like that i don't know that we're allowed to say um or put a link for another listing ebay used to have a rule against that you had to be very vague about it i don't know if that has changed but the disney pictures are framed with a very recognizable frame. So I see two more right away. They're all in great condition. And they have glass. <laughs> I hate shipping glass, I really do. It's like my number one thing to hate in this business is having to ship glass. But we put it in the cart because look how cute that is. I'm getting so old. Cute things just grab my heart. I think this will make some child or adult very happy. So as you can see, I picked up a golf instructional course, Cyber Vision. And I put another one in my cart also, Natural Golf. Everything was included. Again, I have to run comps on something like this. I do notice there's a very small amount of videotape on the video, so I'm not quite sure what that's about. Were they trying to make it look like it was more of a thing than it was? Those spools were almost empty. Very strange. But I do run comps on this, and at $2.99, the top one was worth picking up. The bottom one was not. A little coral colored tray. Here I'm looking at baby pacifiers. In my opinion, you have to be really careful with picking up and listing things like this. There are so many baby items that have recalls, especially pacifiers for choking. So look at the ring on those. That looks super dangerous to me. Unless the pacifier is a one piece like silicone rubber where nothing can break off, I have a tendency to stay away from stuff like that. And somehow we are back off right clothing. <laughs> this is why nobody wants to thrift with me. I am just all over the place. This naturalizer. I don't sell or pick up a lot of naturalizer. I forgot to run a uh, check on that one. Obio, is that how we say that? And there are the Crocs again. I think I'm doing a last scan before I head out. Here I'm showing you a linen shirt that I found, beautiful quality, embroidered. There is a pick stitch, Bugacci Uomo. And I would have picked this up, but when something is linen, see that collar ring? That's hard to get off. You really have to soak that with uh, OxyClean, you know, the, the OxyClean spray and wash spray and do the, um, I couldn't even, so I put that back, but this pajama set is beautiful. Great condition. I believe pajamas in the store are 650, but unfortunately the Bugacci Uomo shirt has to go back. I would have picked that up. Here I'm finding Psycho Bunny. 
I like this brand. I think it's funny. Now, I think I've found Psycho Bunny in men's clothing. I don't know if they make women's clothing. They must. This, to me, is a boy's size. I didn't even look at the size. I think pajama pants are, I'm not even sure what they are, 450. And here, while wheeling my cart to the car, I notice that these are the same roses that grow in my yard. Now, I have the popcorn yellow. These are a beautiful pink. It must be rose season here in Pennsylvania. Look how beautiful these are. This is a knockout rose and they do bloom for quite a while and then you can shear them back and they will bloom again. So I make mine bloom like three or four times and it doesn't zap the energy out of the plant. It seems like the plant likes it. There I'm doing the smell test. So we have the tap test, the feel test, and the smell test. The pink ones don't have a scent, right? I couldn't pick it up, but the yellow ones definitely do. Okay, so we're running a little short on time today. I am just going to do a trunk haul. And we could just take a look at what I bought right here in the trunk. I know you guys like when I show you right away what we got. All right. So the first item that I did pick up was the Psycho Bunny Boys Pajama Pants. And I paid $3.50 for these, I believe she said. Not sure what I'm going to get. I'm going to probably price these at $19.99. And that's what Psycho Bunny looks like. The next item is miscellane pajama set. These pajamas are in excellent condition. I always check the collar to see if there are any stains or marks. Doesn't even look like they've been worn, but I will call them pre-owned. Miscellane is a brand that I do quite well with. I do find this brand in like TJ Maxx or you know stores like that, but they're always like $35. So I paid $5.50 for these and I got the top and the pocket is beautifully embroidered. And I also got the pants. It's a little, little hair or fuzz on it. Next up, I did go with the men's fishing shirt, Spicy Tuna, new with tags. And it has the logo down the sleeve and also really good graphic on the back of a tuna. Is that a tuna? I hope it's a tuna. <laughs> swordfish, could be a swordfish. So out of the two instructional um, training courses, I went with the Neuromuscular Training Golf. This seemed to have better prices, better comps, and it is a VHS and cassette. Seems like everything is here and in great condition. I pay $2.99 for it. I'm not quite sure what this is gonna bring. I'm thinking probably $30, $35. I did pick up the Disney pictures that are professionally framed. So that is what it looks like. It has the date of 2011. So uh, I paid, let's see where the sticker is. What did I pay? $2.99 for these. And it was framed at Michael's in 2012. So I got one, two, Three. Oh, that's a pretty one. Look at that castle. And four. How cute is that? So cute. And I will sell these individually. Now, I did not run comps on this because it's Disney. They're in great shape, professionally framed at Michael's. I really don't want to have to ship them together, so I'm going to sell them individually to give myself a break. And I'm imagining probably $25, $30 a piece. So if all four sell, that'll be $12 into, say, $120. I did take the sandals and I double checked to make sure they're in good condition. $7.47, and that is the name. I don't know how to say that name. Nayot? N A O T. So they are in great shape. Look like they've been barely worn a little bit. 747. I'm imagining 25 to 30 for those. I did pick up this Vera Bradley. It's a note card envelope and sticker set. It seemed like quite a bit of them were there and I really liked them. And I will keep these for personal 
to send little thank yous. You can see one sticker missing and quite a few of the note cards and envelopes are there. Very clean, no smells, no anything, $2.99, so that's for personal. For 99 cents, I picked up this little bag of perfumes. I have done really well with a uh, little French perfume, just little trial perfumes. They're not really trial. I don't know what the minis, let's call them miniatures. So I got one, two, three, four, five. Five of them for 99 cents. So what is that, a 20 cent buy-in price? I might lot this together and sell it for, I'm gonna check comps, but $19.99. So that would be great profit, turning a dollar into 20. And the last item that I took were the Nike shoes. I did pay up for them a little bit, $9.99. Is that what it says? Yeah, $9.99. I got scared there for a second. I thought it said $19.99. Very clean, in good shape. And I imagine these are gonna bring between 45 and 50 because they're in such good condition. This is a little gravy boat. Look at that fish. How cute is that? We love a good fish. And this is the brand name Vilroy and Bosch which has done well in my store before. I don't pick up whole sets of it, but when it's a serving piece and it has such a good print, I go ahead and pick it up. Okay, so that's what we got at the first Goodwill. I am back home to upload this video footage for you guys and get it into the editing queue. And then I will either do the flea market or have a quick lunch and onto another Goodwill. All right, stay tuned. On a brief note, I'm just fitting this footage in here. It has nothing to do with anything. We are in my kitchen, as you can see. And when you come around, fridge, cabinet, this is the doorway where I walk into my office. That's my back door. And I found this beautiful sign, which I am keeping for myself. And that's why I'm including this here, because many times I say I'm going to keep things for myself, and I don't. But this is just gorgeous. It did have a little bit of damage right here. See if I can point to that. But I just filled it in with a black magic marker and doesn't bother me a bit. I love this. I love the color. I love the scripture. And I love the graphic. How beautiful. All right, just figured I'd share that with you guys. On with the video. In this part of the video, we're gonna go over a few items that have sold through on my eBay store recently. Now, I usually share solds and report back to you guys with what things are selling for over on my Instagram, Lavender Clothesline. So if you like to see what type of prices I'm getting for different items, you can follow me over there. But today we're going to take a look at them here and I'm going to share with you a few thoughts of why I think these items sold for such good prices or sold fairly quickly. So the first item that sold is a lot of four rolls of wallpaper. I received these for free for somebody cleaning out their house, $64.05. Now, while I don't pick up or receive and list every roll of wallpaper, I did think these were especially beautiful. It's like a magnolia print, and I think the print and the name Colfax and Fowler is a really good name, 6405. And like I said, I got these for free, so that was a great win. Next up is a pair of shoes that I recently showed in a haul video, I think also in the thrifting video. So I showed finding these and I also showed them to you guys because the name was a new brand for me, Alexandra Berman. And I did run a quick comp when I saw these on the shelf in the store and was thrilled to see that they have a really nice profit margin. $88 these brought and they were genuine snakeskin. The reason that I quickly grabbed them off the shelf was because they were gold and they were genuine snakeskin. I could tell that right away. I believe I paid either $6.50 or $7 for these. Next up is a skirt that I learned the term broomstick quite a while ago. These are the kind of crinkle, I believe they're rayon skirts that you can twist after you wash them and it gets that real crinkly look. And they're great for travel, for, um, you know, for packing, for travel. $41.10 and I paid $4.75. 
This is a pair of sneakers. These are Converse. Now, while I don't pick up every pair of Converse, I thought these were in really nice condition, and I thought that the print of the fabric was kind of cool. $34.80, and they were the Chuck Taylor style, uh, a high top sneaker. I paid $7.50. Next up is a pair of Ikea drapes. I found these in Goodwill and I either paid $2.50 a panel or I paid $2.50 together. I can't remember, but I did show them in a thrift video, $63 and they are Ikea. Next up, a velvet duster coat. This is Coldwater Creek, and again, I don't pick up all of Coldwater Creek, but I thought this was beautiful. The size was nice, the condition was nice, $35.99, and I paid the jacket price of $5.25. Here are a pair of Bass Weijin style loafers. They're the Penny Loafer. These were in beautiful condition. I always look at the Weijin loafer if I find it, and I judge them according to condition. $69.99, and I paid $7.47. Here is a fabric stamper that I knew it was a stamper or a stamp, but I wasn't sure what it was for, and I did a little research. This is used to print cloth or fabric, but I think it could be used also on a wall, and I thought that would be really beautiful. $31.85, I got this in the Bolts auction, and I believe I paid $7 for it. Here is a jacket that I saw on a rack while I was thrifting in Goodwill, and I've never heard of this brand before, Scotty Vest. It's a men's jacket, and I didn't even run a comp. I knew by the quality that this would be good, and I judged it solely on quality and condition. $64.35, and you can be sure I'll remember Scotty Vest. I paid $5.25. Here is a pair of pillow shams, just beautiful. I did catch this while filming in Goodwill. This is Williamsburg. I've sold Williamsburg before, so when I saw that label, I knew it was a good label. $35.99, and I paid $2.50. Here is one of the butterfly dishes. I did film finding these in, I believe I was in Roots Flea Market on a Tuesday morning. I picked up four of these and this one sold for a little under $30. And I believe my buy-in price was either $4 or $5. I believe it was $4. Here, this last item is a large platter, and I was so happy that the customer received this and it wasn't broken because it was just beautiful. $57.30, this was a part of a large pickup. I probably picked up, I'm gonna say, close to 100 pieces of this antique china, and this is taking a while to sell through, but it is selling little by little. The service wear is selling a little bit quicker than the individual lots of plates, but how can you pass up Limoges France dishes? Just so pretty. All right, everyone, that is the video for today. It's going to launch tomorrow, Wednesday. So we're still on the Wednesday, Sunday schedule. I appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for all your encouragement and your comments and buying me coffees and all the things. I love you guys, I really do. Someday my dream is to have a major, major resellers get together and it would have to be like a weekend to be able to talk to everybody. So I'm not doing a weekend reseller meetup, but you never know. All right, thanks again, guys. Go out and get what's yours.